I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the type of movies that I love, the alternative B-rated cult style flicks. Now, as I've made clear in the past, I absolutely love those types of movies that are so bad they're good. And today, that is what I'm going to be reviewing. Some of you may be like, I think you reviewed this movie in the past. I did, but there were no clips in it, so here's the remastered review of Last American Horror Show. This movie's not that old, it was made in 2018, and it was written and directed by Michael S. Rodriguez, and it was released and distributed by Deep Murder Productions and MSR Studios. The movie opens with the character Angelina, played by one of the greatest B-movie actresses ever to grace the screen, Felissa Rose. Of course. And she is talking to her sister Amanda about a blind date she's about to have. Okay, just shut up. Well, I'm just saying, why would you invite him here for your first date? That's totally the type of laptop I would imagine her having. Amanda doesn't like Angelina having this guy Brian over, whom she met on the internet, and is now having a first date at her house. I have enough problems trying to go out in public, and you should know that. I get that, but still, ladies, you don't know the guy, you don't want him knowing where you live. But Amanda decides. Look, I don't support the decision. But I support you. Ah, sisters. By the way, are we going to see Amanda? Angelina and Amanda do come up with a safe word in case Angelina ever needs Amanda to come out and help make this guy leave. I uh, blueberry pie. That's not a safe word. That's safe words. Because there's two of them. Blueberry pie is two words. I want a blueberry pie. What are sisters for? Brian shows up. You look even more beautiful than your profile picture. And Brian comes in and asks, what's on the agenda for tonight? Maybe a hot game of Naked Twister. Blueberry pie. Totally inappropriate. I am really bad at telling jokes. Yeah, a joke. It's what all creepy perverts say. What Angelina wants to do is spend the night watching horror films. Sounds like my wife's favorite date. Brian, though, agrees to sit through the horror films if she agrees that at the end of the horror films to give him a kiss on the cheek. Angelina agrees, and we start the first horror film. Yes, this is one of those movies where it's actually like three short films within one movie. Homewreck starts with a guy, Kurt, telling another bad man that he's got a big score coming up and he can pay him, but he needs till Monday to pay him that. The bad man tells him Monday, or... But I'm like you, and I'm caught out your eyes. Intense. Then we see Kurt sitting outside of a house, waiting, in a car with Marcy and Scab, his crew. Lightweight! <laughs> Lightweight! Then we see in the house Nora, Rick, and Nora's pop having dinner. And Rick and Nora have something to tell pop. I'm gonna be a grandpa! <laughs> but immediately after being excited about being a grandpa, he starts laying into Rick about the fact that he's having trouble holding a job ever since coming back from the war. You're just not the same Rick that married my little girl. In-laws, Pop goes into a Vietnam War story. And all of a sudden, Charlie encroached us from our east flank. With plenty of Vietnam War stock footage, he tells Rick about a time that they were surrounded by Charlie. It was near. They had to keep quiet. But a little girl came in, started screaming. He didn't know if she was just trying to give away the position or if she was attacking. So he did what he knew he had to do. He pulled out his bayonet and he killed her. And then, once Charlie left, the commanding officer comes out and he just punches my lights out. Why, you ask? She was just scared and crying for her mama. So you try rolling through airports and then people yell, baby killer too. Dude, is there a point to this? It was a simple mistake. Rebecca, it's one I've lived with for over 30 years. Well, everyone is very uncomfortable now, thank you, Pops. Move forward and keep living. Yeah, well, I think we get it. Thanks. You want dessert? After that story, no one wants dessert. Actually, I still want that blueberry pie. Kurt, Marcy, and Scab decide it's time to make their move. <laughs> my, my boyfriend just hit me. They decide to be good Samaritans and let her in. You're all right. I'm okay, but you're not. Ah! Rude. They tie everyone up, rough up Pop and Rick a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is not good. 
And I do mean the situation, not the movie. I mean, the movie too, but we're talking about the situation here. While Marcy and Kurt hold Nora and Pop hostage, Rick takes Scab to his safe. Seven. Uh, no, I'm wrong. Uh, Eleven. I'm guessing he grabbed that from the table he was pushed into. Which is good thinking, Rick. I'm sad to say that in that situation, I imagine I probably would have reached for the pie. Kurt starts roughing up Nora, and Pop screams out, Stop! She's with child! Then... <laughs> and then he starts having Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> Pop, this really isn't the time for that. Back to Rick, once Scab gets the safe open... <laughs> Yay! Stab him in the neck, I'm pretty sure that would have done it. Okay, Marcy and Kurt are literally in the next room. I'm sure they can hear this. Back to Marcy, though. But then Rick comes in. Get up, soldier! He, he can't, Rick. He's kind of just been killed. Your pop is... Yay! Yay! Best you can do. Well, he shot you in the chest. That is pretty good. Better? Now Rick sits down to take it all in as we hear sirens in the background. He's looking around at the people he killed. Looking around at his father-in-law, who is now dead. And his wife, who was with his child. Dead. And naturally, he's very distraught. Move forward and keep living. Wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> That was a trip. <laughs> but, 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 Rick? Well, since that is over, Brian tries to get a little closer to Angelina. I'm gonna go get us some popcorn. She's not quite there yet, Brian. Slow things down. So, still dealing with Rick, and we're gonna just get right into the next one. Okay. This one is set in the 80s. Yeah, around that time. And we see a nice, wholesome family sitting around having breakfast. And the youngest, a little boy named Toby, wants a sea creature to take care of. You barely started wiping your own butt, champ. And you want to take care of something? Ah. Okay, he looks like he's anywhere from like 8 to 10 years old. Why did you wait that long to potty train him? But Toby talks his dad into it. My sea creatures came in the mail! But a couple weeks later... I did everything right and nothing. And this is directly related to sea monkeys. See, kids, we had these things called sea monkeys. It was the same thing. You're supposed to put them in water. They were supposed to do stuff. But it turned out it was just brine shrimp. They were already dead. Sea monkeys sucked. So naturally, Mom just dumps them down the drain. A week and he'll forget all about you, you little bastard. That night, Dad pulls Toby aside for a talk. Mom told me about your little fish. Sea critter. All right. My bad. Toby's dad tells him a story about his dog when he was a kid, how he loved this dog, but the neighbor hated the dog and made a false report that the dog attacked her. So the city was going to come and take his dog and put it to sleep try to save the dog he took the dog out to the woods and chained it up but it was miserable it was unhappy out there so he did the only thing he could do not realizing there was two things he could do he could have also just given it to the city but no he went out let the dog play a little bit and then took his dad's shotgun and Damn! you really should just let the city take her and that's all i have to say on the subject of pets good Grandma's coming for the weekend. And Grandma coming is a treat. Mm, I cracked myself once today. See? Because Grandma is, uh, what's a nice way to put this? I need a hot shower. And a drink. I bet. Everyone heads out. Mom goes to do the dishes. Toby goes to set up a game of checkers for him and his grandma to play. Oldest son, Clay, who's about to be 18, goes to work on his car. And Audrey, their daughter, who is 18, which means there was a period of time that mom and dad were getting busy, goes on a date with Johnny. And dad, well... Okay, I get the shower, but I didn't think you meant a shower and a drink at the same time. And what's with the eyelash curler? While mom is doing the dishes... Toby sees this and goes to tell his dad. Sorry, buddy. Can't quite hear you. Seriously, what, what is he doing with the eyelash curler? The sea creature goes for clay. And then... Grandpa, where you been? Grandma, Grandma. Who the hell are you? Grandma, it's me. 
Then we see Audrey on her date. Do you have protection? His response to whether or not he has protection. Some Spanish love, you know. I.e. don't touch him unless you really love antibiotics. Johnny convinces Audrey to go sneak into her room and wait for him to sneak in. <sighs> that wasn't Spanish fly. Johnny. Well, something beat Johnny to it. After a while, Toby is able to get his grandma to remember who he is and takes her to see what happened to mom. What I see is that your mom was a real pig. Yeah, she's such a messy person bleeding all over the place. Then we see Johnny sneak into Audrey's room. Audrey, I didn't know you were a cat. Yeah. What, am I supposed to feel bad for this disease-ridden date rapist? Because I really don't. Toby and Grandma find Clay dead. Let's get Dad! Toby, why don't we go get your dad? No, no, no. You should get Dad. We're on the phone and what the hell are you two babbling about? Dad! First things first, I want to know what you were doing with the eyelash curler. They tell Dad what happened and he gets his shotgun and goes to find Clay. Ah! Ah! Dad goes to call the police and... Ah! Ah! Now we'll never know what he was doing with that eyelash curler. The sea creature now comes after Toby and Grandma. Okay, she may be a whack job, but she is awesome. The police show up. Is this your residence? You got a warrant. No, no, Grandma! And you know it's low budget when they literally can't afford any kind of a costume. Like, they have no police uniforms and their badges look like they got them from the Dollar Tree. Toby takes the cops to his sister's room. <laughs> I'm guessing they died. Grandma comes up with a plan. Oh no. She fills the bathtub with salt water. This thing was your pet. Accept the responsibility. Great Grandma. Is it disturbing anybody else that if they live through this, she's gonna have custody of him? Toby lures the creature into the tub and... Oh, yeah. But then this happens. Die, die, die. So Grandma goes for this. <laughs> and that does it. Oh yeah, we won, we won. Oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. They won, they won, uh-huh. Just shake it, just shake it, just shake it, just shake it. Sorry, but then something is happening to Audrey. <laughs> what the? No, no, it's almost time. Time for what? Why, for my great grandbabies, of course. What the? Back to Brad and Angelina. Angelina had ordered a pizza, and it's finally here. Brad goes to pay for the pizza. The pizza guy notices they're watching horror movies and he asks if he can join them. I get off in five minutes. Now, I too would be like, no, you're not coming to watch the horror movies with us, but Brad was very rude about the way he said no. Well, what about my tip? Are you tip? And he didn't tip him. One more movie. This one starts with the character of Mitchell driving while talking on his cell phone to his girlfriend breaking up with her. Oh, and this. Which leads to this. It's a rental car and apparently they forgot to put the spare tire in the trunk. To make matters worse, Mitchell is not getting a signal on his cell phone, so he has to walk around from house to house looking for somebody to let him use a phone. Hello? Anybody home? But no one is home. After trying a few more places, he meets this guy. That's Wicker. Like the chair. Like the basket. <laughs> and Wicker invites Mitchell to the lamb feed. Have that time. Let's go. No! Yeah, not a chance. When he goes in... So you like what you say? No, I mean... No, not really. Fifth Hey, don't talk to your sisters like that. Wicker tells him he'll get him a phone, but first... Drink it. No! But of course... Idiot. Like, I'm not the biggest horror movie guy in the world, but am I the only one who's actually seen one? Out of nowhere, Wicker's paw starts talking to Mitchell. I killed my dog when I was eight year old. And that was his opener. I had what mama called the yearning. What the frick? Gallbladder of a living thing was the best eat. Frickin' run! Mitchell goes into the bathroom and starts to freak out. 
Duh. And when he comes out. And they chain him down. And Lana, who played Marcy in Homewreck, brings out this guy. Yeah, a guy who apparently watched a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a kid. Although, backstory, I'm guessing he didn't go really crazy until he saw Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4. While Mitchell is struggling... Remember me? No. Should we? But Mitchell has a flashback. I specifically requested a black Cadillac. Oh, okay, so they put that in there to cover this. She's the one who rented him the car with no spare in the back. And he wasn't very nice. Lesson kids, be nice to the rental car people. Oh good, the police! I thought you guys were going to Mitchell is having a really bad day. Then it's time for them to do their anthem. God shed your blood on me. Uh, really? And take your life with the butcher's knife. That's not how it goes. Let that blood flow free. Uh, play ball? just a dream. Oh, good for you. Never mind. Never mind. And it just goes from there. Very bloody. Can't show a lot of it on YouTube. Just then, his phone finally gets a signal and he has a voicemail. Thank God for GPS. I'm coming for you, man. No! Ew. I'll say. He's not even cooked. Okay, I know this is low budget, but you could have gotten a better sign. It's not like they're that expensive. What are we gonna do now, Daddy? Daddy, brother, it's all the same to these people. We go like him. Oh, it was him who put the board out. I had my suspicions. We go get more land. We go get more land. We are going to get more land. We are going to get more lands, okay? I get your hillbilly, but that doesn't mean you have to have bad grammar. That is how you say that sentence in our English language. Our English language. Yours and mine, Wicker. Well, back to Brad and Angelina. I'm just gonna get some more pizza. Pizza. But Brian's not happy with her. He's angry. She's been basically getting distant from him all night. And he says that they made a deal and she owes him a kiss on the cheek. And it's time for her to live up to her end of the deal. You got that? But then he tries to get a little bit more than the deal and tries to force himself on Angelina. Blueberry pie. Okay, I can't show it, but instantly he loses his Captain Winky to her sister. And again, I can't show it, but Amanda was able to get to that so easily because she came out of her... What's a delicate way to put this? Snitch. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's right, people. Mandy's not really her sister. Mandy's her pillow pants. We, we don't, don't care if you get it. And then there's a post credit scene. We can all act like... Don't worry about it. Pizza guys, rule! So there you have it. That's the last American Horror Show with clips. This movie is bad. Like, I can't defend it. It's bad. But it's extremely low budget. Michael S. Rodriguez was basically just trying to do what he could with very limited resources. And he did. He had very little money, but had some good stories, short stories, and he had Angela from Sleepaway Camp. So what more could you want? So if you're like me and you love to watch movies that are so bad that they're awesome, you should check out Last American Horror Show. There you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this review, and if you did, make sure to hit like. Subscribe! Hit that little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos. And leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Last American Horror Show. Love you guys.